Ah, there we go. Just been listening to a podcast I did a few weeks ago with the guys from Eat, Run, Sleep, Repeat. Steve, Steve, Fraser and Nathan. It was really good to chat to the guys. Let me just move this camera here a little bit so you can actually get me in focus. Really good to chat to those guys and talk about all things running. If you want to listen to that podcast, guys, I'll put a link in the descriptions below. Yeah, go and check them out. There's some local Brisbane guys that are doing some great uh, things on the podcast scene talking about all things running. Now, the title of this video, guys, the good, the bad, the ugly, really does flow on from the last video where I spoke about uh, how I was in a bit of a funk with this marathon training program. I'm a little bit dark there, so I might just move the camera around a little bit here so you can see me a little bit more clearly, clearly, clearly. And um, yeah, just in a bit of a funk in this marathon training block uh, for the Melbourne Marathon, October 2, two weeks away now guys so one more long run and then into a taper but um, yeah before I actually get to the good the bad and the ugly really just want to say a huge 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 thank you to everyone that took the time to comment on that video um, look I'm just a small YouTube channel I'm an older guy and to think that um, you guys have really come on board and following my running journey and then taking the time to watch these videos and then also to make comments. Uh, I really do appreciate that. And look, the last video, I didn't make that video to seek out sympathy or anything like that. This whole channel is about my running journey and the fact that you guys comment really is inspiring me to uh, push through these last couple of weeks up to race day. And some of those comments from that last video were fantastic, guys. And if you did watch that video uh, and you haven't checked out the comments, look, go and have a read of them because there's some great tips in there. There was tips on hydration. There was tips on uh, nutrition. There was some running tips, all designed to help you get out of a little bit of a funk or a bit of a low patch that you're going through. And that's what I'm going through at the moment at the back end of this marathon training block. But to read those comments and, um, you know, you're on board, you're behind me. And as I'm preparing for this sub three hour marathon attempt at the Melbourne Marathon. I'm not here to sugarcoat things on the channel, guys. There are some runners who will just focus on the good, hide the bad runs, sweep them under the carpet, but that's not me. I've always said here on the channel, I'll be open and honest with you about my running. Nothing's going to change there. This is my running journey, so I want to document the good, the bad, the ugly, you're going to get it all. And I personally think that you learn just as much from your bad runs as you do your good runs. And for me, this last six or ten months with my running, I feel that I've learnt more in that period than I have in the past 15 years of running about my body, how it reacts to my running. And that may be too because I'm getting a little bit older, 56 as you know guys. decision to wear the long socks for park run. And the biggest learning for me this year has been recovery and those easy run days because as I'm getting older I'm finding that uh, I'm needing longer to recover from races, from those hard sessions. It has taken me a while and I'm still going through the processes of trying to recover well, slow those easy run days down. But this marathon training block, uh, I still think I'm caught in the past. Some of my old habits where I'm running a lot of my runs 
still too quickly and it's at my age now just not giving me the, the opportunity to recover as well as I should be. I think uh, I've only two more weeks of this marathon training block to go. Taper just around the corner, one more long run to go. I think if I do another marathon training block, I'm going to really pay so much more attention to recovery and easy run days. And I will probably move away from the normal seven day cycle for a training block for a marathon and probably look more towards a 10 or a 14 day training block. And what I mean by that is that every sort of 10 or 14 days I'll do a long run and this will just allow me to have some more easy or recovery days between doing the long runs and the quality speed sessions as well. Just making sure that the body's recovered and fresh enough when I do have to do those quality sessions. So that's been the biggest takeaway for me in uh, 2022. It's recovery, recovery and easy days. And I'm still learning and I'm still trying to drag myself out of the past and into this new way of thinking with recovery and easy days. So I'm a work in progress still, even at 56. I'm still sort of tweaking things a little bit with my running. And I guess what it really means is that I have, or I am starting to understand that I need to listen to the body more uh, with my running. And that's something that I'm going to be taking forward after this marathon training block. Now, don't get me wrong guys, I've had some really, really good runs in this training block. I had that sub 85 minute half marathon there at the Sunshine Coast. I had the park run 5k, that 18.17, the fastest 5k that I've done in five years. So it hasn't all been doom and gloom in this marathon training program, even though I haven't felt probably 100%. And look, quite a number of reasons for that. I have been struggling, I believe, to come back from COVID in May. What's that, four months ago now? I really feel that uh, like my breathing patterns have changed and that's just sort of has cast a little bit of a doubt in my mind about um, running the longer distances anyway I just feel that the endurance is not quite what it was pre-COVID so I don't really know if it was the COVID vaccine booster jab that I had uh, when was that now about six weeks ago so that was in July whether that has affected me as well and taken me a little while to come back was it a combination of that vaccine jab and the fact that I had COVID in April I don't know and also I am struggling with recovery whether that's got something to do with COVID I tend to think it's more that I am getting older and the body's just uh, getting a little bit tired and worn out and just needing those extra days to bounce back from those races and hard runs. It's something that I've got to be mindful of. Obviously coming into the taper now, it's, uh, it's all about freshening up for the Melbourne Marathon. Um, look, there are still a lot of doubts in my mind. I still feel that I am struggling with my endurance, even though I have been ticking off some long runs over the past few weeks. All the shorter stuff don't seem to have a problem with. I'm maintaining paces quite comfortably but there's just the doubts that are in the back of my mind leading into a marathon. And I guess really it's doubts that everyone has at the, the, the back end of a marathon program. You know, have you done the work? Have you done the miles? Have you got your nutrition right? Have you got your hydration right? All those sort of things come flooding into the mind. But I think at the end of the day, you've just really got to trust the process. I know I've done the work. I know my nutrition and hydration is good. I know what to expect on race day. I know what uh, nutrition or the gels that I'm going to be using on the race day. I know what shoes I'm going to be wearing. Watch out for that in another video. Uh, so I'm pretty well set. It's just a matter of getting my mind in the game now and getting that confidence uh, because I know I can do it. I know I can do it, but yeah, I've got to get in the right frame of mind, guys. So that's what the next two weeks are going to be all about. Freshening up, enjoying the taper, getting the mind right, rest, rest and hydration as well. Oh, and of course, with a taper, bringing back the mileage as well. But keeping a little bit of quality in there so that, um, you know, the body doesn't forget how to tick off that marathon pace. All right, guys, that's it for this video. I really do appreciate you watching. And again, 
thanks everyone that uh, commented on the last video uh, it really does mean a lot to me and as i said i'm really getting inspiration from you and those comments i will get to those comments guys i've just been so busy with other things that have been happening i will answer all those comments uh, very soon until next time guys take care and i'll see you in the next video